What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 updates and a little bit of news. It's a bunch of talk about buffing drop rates for adept Grandmaster weapons, as well as some updates and fixes for exotics. And we're also going to talk about some remaining Season 15 content, story quests, Festival of the Lost, and more. Plus, we've got some interviews with Bungie about characters and future seasons worth touching on, and a couple of other things to round up in the video. So, guys, as always, if you enjoy this one, then feel free to get subscribed for more Destiny 2 content. But now, let's get into it. And starting out with a couple of little updates from Bungie right here. Initially, DMG confirmed that it looks like there's going to be a change for adept reward drop rates in Grandmaster Nightfalls. And he says they're going to have a call out about this in the TWAB on Thursday. And so hopefully we're going to be getting that improved drop rate for adept weapons in Grandmaster soon. Give us any thoughts you have about that possible change. Also, DMG confirmed that they do have some bug fixes for the Dune Marchers. They can do some pretty weird stuff inside of the Crucible. And there are bugs that allow the exotic to proc multiple times, get kills at some ridiculous ranges, and even potentially get kills after dying. So DMG said it looks like the team is working on some fixes for a future patch, although it is going to be a couple of months until we get that update, potentially the update in December. So once they have more information, they say they'll let us know. Another quick mention worth touching on right here, but Delta Intel shared that Destiny 2 Beyond Light is coming to the Xbox Game Pass on PC starting on October 12th. So that's a pretty interesting one and for any players who don't have Beyond Light, but they've got Xbox Game Pass, it could be a pretty useful one, and I'm sure Bungie will give us more info soon. Next though, we have the weekly story and the final few steps of the Wayfinder's Voyage quest drop this week. And when we actually complete it, we do get a new exotic sparrow called Eternal Recurrence, which is a pretty cool kind of Awoken themed sparrow. However, there are more story beats to come, and we've been building up to an upcoming mission where we perform the exorcism on Savathun's Worm. And the new exotic sparrow appears to confirm this, Bit of a spoiler alert right here, but despite the fact we got the Sparrow at the end of the quest, it is listed as a reward from the mission Exorcism, which is also referenced in text lines for the season as an upcoming quest. This also makes sense as in all the dialogue this week, the Queen and Savathun refer to us nearly being ready to perform the ritual, and so there is at least one final kind of hidden mission for the season coming up at some point in the future, but for now, in case you missed it, this is what Savathun had to say this week. I've been keeping tabs on you, your victories against my sister, the mess you've made of the Ascendant Plane while you rescued your third string witches. Delightful to see so many working towards a common goal, isn't it? I'm glad I can again be the catalyst that brings humanity and the Reef together. It's a pity Mara Sav doesn't see it that way. Her face is a perfect porcelain mask. But look behind her eyes, and you can see the incandescent rage burning within. She's very upset with me. This will be our last talk until the day of the ritual, O oh Guardian Mine. Now that Marasov's coven is assembled, the only thing left to do is to keep Zivu Arath from ruining things while the ley lines fall into position. This may take some time, but I have waited millennia to be free. I can hold out for just a little bit longer. Farewell. For now. Next, I wanted to mention some interesting interview bits for Season 15, and Bungie have recently once again spoken with Austin Wood at Games Radar. And regarding characters, they did say in a previous interview that Destiny 2's first raid boss Callus is out there waiting and doing something. In terms of story, they're not really sure exactly what, but they say they are excited to do things with that character after the ghost ship activity in Season 14. And I'm guessing that's actually a reference to Presage. And so Callus is likely to play some kind of role in the future, but the devs also tease that Mithrax, the same 14, and Keitel will be seen again in the future. And the developers specifically said Season of the Chosen isn't the last that you'll see of Kaito. We really want to pay off the relationship that she and Zavala have developed. We've tried to talk about her a little bit more in some of the lore about how she's advising Zavala, and then the Lakshmi situation in Season of the Splicer, she approaches him about how to handle this Savathun situation in the Dreaming City. But she's not going to be relegated to lore forever. We're going to hear from her again. We're also going to hear from Mithrax and Saint again, and we want to keep building momentum and that we're telling stories people are emotionally invested in and excited about. So some very specific callouts right there, especially with the mentioning Keitel and Zavala discussing the issue with Savathun and the curse in the Dreaming City. 
There's potential that Kaito could actually play some kind of role in the Witch Queen. One of the devs also said that they think the community hasn't noticed how powerful Zivu Arath is going to be in the story. And one thing we have to take into consideration is that we want each season to be a little different, but at the same time you're trying to tell this interlocking cohesive story. People liked Season of the Splicer, people enjoyed Mithrax's story, but you don't want an entire year focused entirely on Vex or Elixni coming into the city. And balancing those concepts of keeping the seasons interlocked in the story story moving forward in a way that's cohesive, as well as trying to make sure people are engaging with content and gameplay that's visceral and new and feels different than something they've just played. That's one of the big challenging points. And it kind of gives a bit more insight into why Bungie are tackling the story the way they are over the course of the year. But I'm definitely excited to see what they do with those characters. And also in terms of Season 16 launching alongside the Witch Queen, the other week we discussed that Bungie had said all of the content for Season 16 is going to be front-loaded alongside the Witch Queen. It'll still have calendar beats, no doubt, but they won't be launching the main activities and quests and things like that after Witch Queen, but instead it will go live at the same time, so it is going to be a significant amount of content available at once on day one. Otherwise, in terms of new content this season, and stuff that we'll probably learn more about this week, but we are going to get Festival of the Lost kicking off next week, so that'll be Tuesday the 12th of October. And we know that it'll come with a somewhat similar format, there'll be masks and candy, but a new activity this year called Haunted Sectors, which sound like Haunted Lost Sectors, we'll probably get a trailer for that stuff soon. We're also going to get the Dino Armor, and listed at the moment is three weeks of Eververse items for the event, so it looks like Festival of the Lost will last for at least three weeks weeks and we'll see a bunch of stuff from previous seasons and previous festival events. And then there's a load of new stuff in the database, a lot of it is classified, but there are new exotic emotes like Gourd Summoner and Strange Brew, so it's going to be interesting to see those, and once again we're probably going to get a reveal in the next few days, so stay tuned here on the channel. However, for today, guys, that's what we have to round up inside of this video. So, as always, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, a like rating down below really does help us out. Also, be sure to get subscribed if you're new around here, and you can turn on notifications if you want to be kept up to date with Destiny news as soon as it drops. But otherwise, for now, I appreciate you guys tuning in as always, and whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day. Petra, it's Ikora Ray. I thought now would be a good time to check in. Things are progressing as well as can be expected, given the circumstances. While we've recovered some of the lost Techians, we still don't have everyone we need to separate Savathun from her worm. Understood. Don't rush this on my account. Savathun may be waiting for the freedom she thinks is coming, but frankly, I don't care what she wants. This needs to be done with as minimal risk to your people as possible. I know you hope that this will lead you to Osiris, but you want my opinion? Osiris is already dead. Savathun is a creature of lies. She has no honor. Your opinion is noted. And on the subject of opinions, House Crow, you want my take? On him? In a word, vulnerable. But Queen Mara refuses to send him away. Though, you could. Trust is a delicate thing, Petra. I don't want to lose his. This is important to him. I trust Crow to make the right choices, and for you to protect him from himself. <laughs>